Yeah. All right. Thank you, Zoom lady. All right. Yeah. So hi, everyone. My name is Talia Cruz, and I'm an intern at Utah State University for the Office of Empowering Teaching Excellence. And today I'm pleased to welcome Mo Molly Apple and Laura Decker from Nevada State College. And so I'm going to pass the floor over to them so they can introduce themselves and start their presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and drop a Google Doc in to the chat. A few of you were already in here and you might already have access to it. But for those who just joined, um, you should be able to access it. And this Google Doc, it, it has um, sort of a, a, an outline or a map of what we'll be doing, which again, I'm thinking back to James Lang's conversation about making sure people know what are, what are we doing, why are we doing it, and what's next, right? So you can actually kind of follow along there. Um, and it's a living, breathing document. So feel free to, at the bottom, there's you know questions, comments. Um, we can use that space for this discussion or for thinking about future discussions as well. And I'll let Molly um, kind of start to introduce our presentation with the slides. Yes, I'm just sorry. I get very hyper after teaching a class. And so I'm just bringing that energy in here. Um, so grateful to be able to talk with you all today and to um, bring this strategy that Laura and I kind of discovered that we were both sort of doing, um, you know, without intentionally coordinating. And so we're really, we want to just give you a sense today of this, what may seem like a sort of small everyday strategy, sustained small group learning um, has made a really big difference um, for our virtual classrooms. Laura has taught it asynchronously. I've taught it synchronously. These terminologies that are now, um, you know, the bane of our existence, but uh, describe these different things. And so we're hoping that by the end of our session today, you guys will be able, you will have uh, done these three things. One is to reflect upon your students' struggles and needs in their virtual learning environments. Another is to explore uh, the synchronous and asynchronous models of sustained small group learning that Laura and I have implemented in our classes. And finally, to sort of identify potential opportunities to build that kind of intervention into your work. And so it's, we are gonna hop off, you know, time is always a malleable and bendable thing, but here's our goal. We're gonna start off with a little poll to kind of as a little bit of a warm up exercise. Laura and I are gonna present to you a little bit about how this came about in each of our classrooms, sort of the direction that we took. And then we're hoping for the good bulk of our workshop today to be a, what we're calling a gallery walk and talk um, in some smaller breakout rooms so that you guys can actually, instead of just us like telling you the things, which we will do, but to give you a chance to really explore the materials that we've been using and developing in our classes, as well as the research that has informed that. And you can see some delightful uh, student responses and um, what it has meant to them. And then we'll wrap up. So yes, again, there's always more things to say, always more things to ask, always more ideas than is ever possible. And so one thing that I appreciate actually about these virtual settings is that we um, are more readily incorporating different um, avenues of communication. So I really do encourage you guys to use the chat, to use this session notes, to copy it down for your records if it's something you wanna go back to. So that's where we're at. Laura. Okay, great. So <laughs> we have a poll for you and um, I'm gonna go ahead and actually share one of my screens so that we can see our poll take shape. So you can respond at pollev.com slash Laura Decker 079, or you can text uh, to Laura Decker 079, um, text that to 36, uh, sorry, 37607. Um, and then you can text your response. And so what we want to know is what do you see your students struggle with? 
um, in terms of learning in your courses. And we can think of this in the virtual sense. Um, if some of you, you know, have that quicker map to access, which is like thinking more broadly about your face to face teaching before um, maybe you switch to virtual learning, that's fine too. Um, but of course, Molly and I sort of came to these uh, activities within our um, uh, virtual learning environments. So we'll just ask you to go ahead and um, uh, throw some answers out there. And hopefully this is going to, um, uh, let's see, oh, we don't have responses yet. So, all right, Ooh. excellent. So we're getting some, so yeah, excellent. So time management, differentiating their classes. Oh, everything feels the same. That's interesting. Oh, yeah. Uh, completing assignments, sure, right? Just like making sure that you're getting things done by the due dates, you know, following prompts, um, revision, certainly, of your writing or your projects, mastery of concepts. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, challenging concept, concepts or threshold concepts in your, in your field, um, communicating with peers outside of class. Okay, great. Um, so struggling with that, managing work in school. Yep, absolutely. Accountability to whom and when feeling isolated. Yeah. <clears throat> especially during COVID, especially for these first year yes. students. Yes. Wanting more handholding. I love this one. So maybe a little more handholding than you feel like you can provide. I think that's great. That's a great answer. I'm really struck by the phrasing though. I'd be curious to hear more. Yeah, <laughs> sure, sure. Teamwork. Absolutely. Um, being able to hear content in Zoom. They hear, but they don't seem to hear the same way as in the classroom. Interesting. It sounds also like maybe this links to uh, James's conversation over uh, um, the lunch break as well. Being in a learning environment that they might not otherwise have chosen. Yeah, so just like the, the struggle, the affective response to, you know, here I am, and these are the tools I have before me, and they're not the ones that I'm really excited about. Okay, great. Um, if we see any more pop up, I'll try to kind of uh, keep that in mind. Um, but those are all really legitimate responses. So challenges um, that you might have. Molly, do you wanna go back to the PowerPoint and we can talk about the challenges that we had and sort of where each one of us came to um, these sustained small group learning? Yeah, they really resonate those things really resonate with my experience. Some of them articulating things I didn't even know that I was thinking about. So thanks for those great responses. Laura, why don't you start? As the slides have told us to, can people see them? Did I? I, I think you have to share them again because I'm sharing, I'll stop my share and then, oh, maybe there it is. Okay, sorry. There were things in my way. Yeah, so, <laughs> excuse me. So my sustained small group learning um, was something uh, new or a little bit new, adapted from some previous classes um, that I did in the spring because I was teaching an English 101 course that was uh, asynchronous. So it was online, um, it was asynchronous. And I thought about some of the places that my previous students in face-to-face -face 101 courses um, had um, where they had found challenges. And so a lot of this is like around reading, right? So reading in the classroom, so like textual elements, understanding um, rhetorical choices that writers make, uh, understanding genre, like what's an essay, what's a letter, what's an article, what's you know a chapter or a story, right? Uh, planning for their projects. And I know this popped up in the poll, right? It's like finishing projects, but also like planning them so that they're effective, revising them. Writer's block is a big one. How many of my students have like not been able to turn in something because they're just, they feel like they're blocked, right? They feel like, whatever they've got isn't good enough. Um, collaboration certainly is a point. And then so importantly, which again came up in the poll was that social interaction that we typically see in those first year classes that we know is important to belonging. It's like, how are we gonna do that, right? In this particular, in this particular class. Yeah, very similar with me. I, um, and I would say, I think certainly, I think definitely as well. Um, for me, these these smaller, what began as in-person kind of small group, almost like reading book groups um, with a particular text that we use throughout our gateway composition course, I saw even while in person became these little units of like 
oh, these are my people in the class. Like I know I can turn to them. And so, um, you know, in the, the, I think a number of us have been doing this, the AQE like online teaching thing, um, the course, and luckily some of our institutions have been offered to that. I remember um, it came up early on that uh, one of the instructors introduced the term accountability groups and it sort of hit me like a like a like a bolt I'm like oh this is absolutely what it is that I'm seeing happening among my students and that I think could be something that I could structurally introduce that could help address these feelings that they all shared especially in the beginning of the semester my I you know I we feel for them right they're like first year of first semester of college in particular and you know, they were hoping to have that in-person experience and here they are all over Zoom. And so um, I think that a lot of that has resonated with us as well. So that's how my uh, accountability group slash small group uh, um, component to the course came about. Laura, do you wanna to speak to some of the- Sure, the sure. Are like, hey, this is a thing that is studied and works. <laughs> So there is an incredible body on collaboration research, and it's very likely that you've dug into that for your classes. So we're, you know, we're not going to spend a lot of time on the research, but we just selected a couple of articles or pieces that we thought were really kind of foundational to this idea. Um, uh, Kenneth Bruffy's piece about writing classrooms and collaborating across students, the fact that when they dialogue with their peers, they develop their writing, right? So we see these things happening together. Also, the way that um, you know, collaboration mirrors um, the, the skills in anti-racist teaching and learning. And I know there was a really great presentation this morning um, from Cree on uh, anti-racist instruction and, you know, um, thinking about our role as instructors, but also our students' roles. Um, and and um, that small groups help students develop new knowledge and independence from the instructor. I think back to that hand-holding comment, you know, that maybe we can kind of dig into in a little bit, but I think, you know, it, this piece of the research really speaks to that, right? It's like that independence. Like, I, I don't need you to hold my hand. I have a group that I'm collaborating with, right? And then finally, you know, small group learning can foster that sense of belonging that both Molly and I talked about, you know, uh, when we thought about where our students might struggle or what we wanted to do for our students in these classes. Um, and that's, uh, it's critical for not only success, but retention, right? Um, and, um, you know, all the great things that come with being a college student um, and graduating. Uh, and you'll actually, you'll be able to see these articles as well once we get to our um, Padlet page, the gallery walk and talk. Which we'll do now. <laughs> so uh, we have a link, it's in the Google Doc that we shared that you're gonna open that document and see like colors everywhere. Oh my God, where do I even start? And so here's what it is that you're gonna be looking at. Um, we have showcased the models for how we've built in sustained small group learning into our courses, um, as well as linked that small group learning that builds that community, builds that sense of collaboration and connection, even while it actually um, helps students showcase their learning and their knowledge and, and really um, supports content and skill building in a really critical and um, impactful way. And so uh, we're gonna do breakout rooms. Laura, I actually wonder if it might be nice to like have some smaller rooms and we can sort of hop around if we have that co-host ability, but something yeah. to consider. I but, think that's fine too. We have, um, besides you, me, we have nine essentially, um, nine participants right now. Three, three groups of three. Much I don't know. Do Sometimes it, it yields a little bit more to some conversations sure. in the bigger groups. But what you're going to see, um, why don't I just do that? So we have the yellow colors, which are all the actual models, right? Assignment listings, uh, details of like what did we actually tell the students they were doing and how do we introduce it to them? Um, the yellow, sorry, is the synchronous. So what my classes were, the red is the asynchronous. So how Laura introduced it. 
then you're going to get into the blue and purple. And this is feedback and reflections that students have had um, in their experiences, the role and impact that having these small group learning experiences had on their semester and had on their learning. The purple is synchronous. The blue is asynchronous. Then here at the bottom, but or we could think at the foundation, right? It's a, it's the root of this tree. The um, articles, uh, you know, four of the many studies and and scholarship that has been done on this practice. But to give you a sense of that, so that is our little orientation to the gallery walk and talk. So we encourage you guys to kind of use this as a way of like, okay, let me get in there and see um, what we think about this. We can have questions and chats. And as always, we encourage you to drop comments and questions either on the Google page or on the Padlet, which I'm still kind of learning to use, which is really neat. Molly, do we, do we want to give them about 10 minutes for the gallery walk and talk, and then we'll come together for the last 10 minutes to kind of debrief and share out and Good. finish up? Is that the time that we have? Sounds great. Okay, great. Uh, would you like to the, so, I don't have breakout room. I think our Sorry. host is going to do them for us now. Got Perfect. it. Okay, see ya. Okay. And then Talia, I just want to make sure that we will be able to, like Molly and I can move around. So right now I've got an invitation for breakout room too, but could you move me in three minutes to a different breakout room? Yeah, I'll try and figure out how to do that. <laughs> okay, I think you can just like reassign me um, and then you could just move Molly to the one I had been in or something like that. Yeah, I'll make okay, sure you do that. Thank you.
Not sure. <laughs> oh, All right, well, we'll just wait. Looks like we have maybe one more group um, that is still waiting to come back. Hopefully you had some good conversations. And there they are. Thanks, Zoom Excellent. lady. All right, so we just have about four minutes left. Um, oh, well, yeah, I know. <laughs> Um, I think this is our sort of like debrief and and reflect yes. and wrap up, right? Yes, so I'll share the our little guiding slide here. Excellent. So I know I got like I had an adventure of a number of different excellent conversations, and yeah, we would love to hear out uh, anyone share out just some thoughts that have been percolating for them in terms of stuff they want to explore or whatever it might be. Yeah, and maybe stuff you're already doing because yeah, I did see yeah, a couple of you who are doing something like this. Maybe like what you, where you might go from here. Again, thinking back to James Lang, what's next? What's next for small, sustained small group learning in our classes? Now we're all quiet and shy, I guess. <laughs> um, so I learned um, from a, a participant in my breakout room. I am not perfect at this yet. I'm trying to implement it in my course and I keep running into to all sorts of hiccups, but they talked about always appointing a leader, having some direction there, um, a little bit more structure to these groups. And I think that that's something that's really valuable. Yeah, Ken, I'm glad you brought that up. One of the areas my students had to reflect after each meeting was, you know, how was time shared equi equitably or not? And who took on that leadership role in each conversation? And it was really interesting for me to see those roles shift or, you know, fluctuate back and forth over time and to, and to see students say, you know what, I'm not taking a big part in these conversations and I need to be um, a bigger part. So yeah, I think, that's, I think that's a great point that your group mate brought up. Yeah, John and I talked about that too a little bit before I got pulled from the conversation, but um, in terms of how much structure is too much structure or too little structure, and one of the other things we talked about um, was involving sort of students in the uh, making explicit the thing, the expectations and norms of like, what does a good conversation, a successful conversation feel like, sound like, what does a good collaboration or successful collaboration feel like, sound like, and what can we do when inevitably something goes wrong and kind of working together with them to make those things explicit as a way of reminding them that they have the capacities and tools um, to problem solve these things that are an integral part, obviously, of doing collaborative work. So yeah, I'm glad. I like that this was happening across multiple breakout rooms. I've used Canvas, the small group discussions where you can divide your students into 
like have, have a group of 30, have divide them into two groups, but there's no video, there's no audio. And I found since the pandemic, they just don't use those rooms very much anymore because now they're used to Zoom. So they'd rather have their own Zoom room where they can talk to each other and see each other. Mm -hmm. um, and so they want all the senses involved now. They're used to it now. Have As you- opposed to, you know what I mean on Canvas, those small group discussions? I, where you I've used small group discussion rooms. I've used that before. Um, Sherry, I'm wondering, have you had your students try Flipgrid at all? It's, it's, a, it's an async. Yeah, I, I did. Yeah, I did use that for introductions for new students. It was pretty cool. Yeah. Did they enjoy that? Yeah. Um, I'm not using that tool a lot, but I know some colleagues was, who. Um, I thought it was good for group for students to introduce themselves to each other for brand new students so they could see and hear each other. I, I don't know if I'd use it for a for a research class or something, but the, the point is that one thing I've learned from your session is students want to really engage with each other in these small groups. Yeah, totally engage really with each other. For it. And I mean, so are we, right? <laughs> um, yeah, and, and Sherry, I think I, what you're talking about, yeah, I, I end up, what I end up doing is using the group features on Canvas once I have their groups organized to quickly and easily kind of allow them access to the things that I guess that does, the discussion board messaging so that, yeah, I would imagine if they wanted to set up uh, a Padlet or a Zoom meeting with one another um, or a WhatsApp group chat, I know a num I think a lot of the students who were in accountability groups or, you know, the, the team groups um, set up group chats and, and like use that sort of seamlessly, yeah. I think, the way they're communicating with their friends in their lives. So um, yeah. yeah, that's that's been a useful feature for me of Canvas. I, I, you know, I'll just, I think we're just about out of time, but one other thing that I'm kind of hearing from some of those small groups that we were in and then now is and something I've been feeling as well is, you know, students are hungry for this engagement and I don't know that we're a necessary part of it, right? Like right. we're not necessary in those small groups. And I think it's great because it gives them a space that's more student, and it's not more student centered, it is student centered because it's for, it's made it's up literally of Literally, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and I think, I think, think that it's good for that independence and, you know, it's good for, um, um, you know, pushing off some of the, the things that you want them to work on, giving them that freedom to work on it without feeling like, oh, this, this discussion is being watched by my instructor. And well, aligned with that, right, showing them that trust, because if you show them that you trust them to do these things, they will trust themselves to do it. They'll be better at developing that ability in themselves. And my experience has been, you know, obviously, like, there's always those who, who breach that, but like 99 out of 100 times when you show students the trust and give them the ability, like put them in the driver's seat, they shine, they do it. So yeah. All right, thank you, so much. <laughs> thank you, Laura. Thank you, Molly, for being here today. Thank you to all the participants. Um, make sure to go and fill out that feedback survey for us. Um, that's really helpful. And yeah, have a nice day, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. You can stay in touch. Thank, thank you. <laughs> Take care.